All right, what's up, everybody? It's your boy User. Um, a couple new Maximum Football clips got posted on Twitter. Now, I'm very interested in this game, so I'm very disappointed about it being pushed back. But after seeing these clips, it really changed my perspective on the delay and why it got delayed. There's clearly some things that they still feel aren't ready for the masses to experience. But versus what I've seen to these couple of new clips, they've made tremendous strides in my opinion so I kind of wanted to talk through just the clips and maybe break down from like a football perspective why I'm very impressed with what they're doing I've seen a lot of Madden 24 gameplay to this point and again you could show me Madden 21 gameplay I, I mean I don't think I would really see much of a difference especially versus the you know PS4 to PS5 jump to me it's it's very generic of a jump but this first clip, um, it's a rollout TD pass. We'll just go through it real quick. Okay, so just to kind of talk through the play and just some things I've seen, I'm going to really talk through the pocket and uh, it looked like on the, all these clips we're getting a lot of cover two from the defense so this is a three-man pressure and you're going to have a cover two so these two safeties are going to be playing deep halves here on the field you're going to have the corners playing like a, a 10 yard like a flats coverage and your inside players are basically playing like a read react like a curl to um, you know like a 10 yard zone here at about the sticks um, a couple things I'm really impressed with so far from Maximum Football is the safeties and their back pedal. So as you can see, they're taking two different angles here based off the offensive alignment. This one's more straight back. This one's more from this hash to the sideline. And I think that's one thing I'm very impressed with. It looks like the, the, the assignments the defensive players are going through are a little bit more complex than what the Madden reads are. I know Madden just added um a read steps for the secondary and of course i could find a good example of that because i really wanted to show it but as you can see here um this receiver is being released to the interior of the defense he's maintaining outside leverage um this guy didn't do as good a job with the outside leverage i'd like to see the dbs get a little bit more physical maybe play a little bit better hands-on when they're transitioning through the zones um, as you can see here the way that the pocket is developing now this is kind of a big one a lot of people have been talking about quarterback escapes this player and the running back are kind of big problems as of right now so a cool thing too is it looks like the tds are kind of triggered based off of you know the user running through the end zone the animation for that's very cool but here's a zoomed in look at the offensive line play so you can see here we're going to focus in on this player he basically doesn't look like the AI knows what he wants to do here. I think he's programmed to look at this defensive end in a in a 3-4. You have basically um, three interior linemen, usually in a three-man rush. So this is going to lead to a double team here somewhere. Um, you can see he does a kick step animation. I like to see this player's feet flipped, so he's kick stepping with his outside foot from the tackle. But it doesn't look like he can trigger into that yet. So his AI basically spins into a circle, a little bit cleaner play on the right side of the line. Again, something I think this is a reason why they're pushing this back. One, he can't trigger into an animation. And two, um, you're getting some AI moving in very awkward situations. Now the running back here looked like he's in a blocking assignment and actually triggers. Um, he leaves the pocket here and runs into the quarterback. I'm kind of jumping through this here. So look at the running back here. During the throw, he runs across his face, which is a very big no-no, especially when your quarterback's trying to deliver a pass from the pocket. But um, overall, the play was very cool. The receiver animations need a little bit more from a route running perspective. And I've seen the videos basically explaining their um, AI and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I think this is must be a better receiver. He's finding some space there. But here's Madden 24, and we're going to look at the offensive line play here from this game as well. Um, you know, 30 years of generational 
you know, hardware, software, programming that this game's had, the NFL, ESPN, those um, Amazon chips they put in the outfits and stuff to track all the player movement and all that shit. It doesn't seem like it was working to transfer into the game. So now they're going with the Sapien technology. So first thing you're going to get here is 71. And he's basically not busy so he comes clean across the center and tries to pick up an opposite gap um i don't i'm not a coach for an offensive line i would probably sit this guy down and question his thought process here because usually the guards never cross the back or the face of the center unless this is like a designed play action with a kick out here like if he was pulling and coming over here to help plant the pocket this just doesn't look to be the case and i don't think madden has the technology or the staff that can translate football to that high of a level so you see him fighting across here and it looks like the scrambling quarterbacks are going to be really really super overpowered like usual but the reason i'm showing that clip is because of this next clip so this is from madden 06 on the ps2 the goat of madden's in my opinion um here's a blocking example as you can see this is running on generational hardware from like two decades ago. So you can see here the right tackle isn't able to double team. So what he does is he comes across the back of the center, almost identical to that Madden 24 clip, which kind of further pushes the point that I believe they're just dumping code on top of other code. Um, I think in Madden 09, they went backwards from the 08 progress that they made in the new next gen engine and just went back and resurfaced PS2 code and just started dumping shit on top of it. So I do think maximum football has some issues from the offensive line perspective. And I think that's a major reason why, but I also wanted to show its competitor and it's generational blocking problems as well. So let's look at maximum football with an open mind before we really persecute it too badly. Now this clip here is actually a pick six. I wanted to kind of just let this play out. So there's a lot to digest here on this play. So we'll just start from the beginning. Um, you get two good kick steps here from the tackles. This pocket forms a lot cleaner than the previous play. As you can see, a lot of the players are maintaining position. Um, the running back, if he's blocking, I'd love to see him step up and either chip and release or be here in this void. So he's out of the quarterback's way. Um, kind of wanted to talk through it again, just from the defensive perspective. So it looks like it's another cover two. So again, you're going to have the safeties playing the deep halves. Um, it's sort of like a hybrid cover two. Maybe it's a three disguise or something because this one player here will drop back into a deep zone here. So the corners are going to have flats responsibility, which is where the pick six comes from. And I wanted to look at this, especially from this defensive perspective. I'd like to see these DBs be tighter to the formation, still maintain their outside leverage as a zone player. But you can see he gets into a nice little backpedal animation there. He plants when he sees the player crossing face here. Again, I'd like to see them be a little bit more physical. Some of the Maddens, I don't know if they really do it much anymore, did have animations for when you'd come through zones, they would bump those players. Um, again, I don't, play in a, I don't play Madden. I haven't bought it since 2015. But I do watch a ton of footage on it to understand where the game is at this point. And it supports me not buying it still, just visually what I'm seeing. But again, you see the safeties here are at two different kind of depths. Now, I don't know if that's an awareness thing or a technique thing, but you can see they're not just, they're reading. There's something happening with the AIs here that they're doing what they're doing. And I think that that's very interesting as a user, like the player. Um, I actually have to sort of read these players. And it might even get to a point where week to week, you have to study different types of teams that you're playing and maybe have some sort of like game plan going into it, knowing that maybe this safety isn't doing the job he's supposed to be doing in a lot of these cover two shells. Um, I might be reading too far into it. I mean, I could be crazy, but again, um, outside leverage here, 
this looks like some sort of extended out route and i don't know if the ai knew he was covered and turned it up or if this route was basically some sort of out and up but you can see here he's not looking he turns the route up and i think he's throwing to this player here who Again, I want to say he's throwing from a nice clean pocket with sort of like a sidearm throw motion. So there may be a few different throw animations for the quarterbacks here. DB's eyes on the ball, which allows him to jump the play. Very cool transition here. And I'm going to talk about that a little bit more. But look how clean the animation is from the interception itself. So again, the animation's playing out. Nice clean footwork underneath them. And I want to also talk real quick about how they're running. To me, the Madden running animation took a major step backwards during the Xbox 360 PS3 generation. And it's never really been the same since. I still think the PS2 has the best run animation. Um, but look how it looks like fast football. Like these are Division One NFL athletes sprinting at one another. And it's not slow. It's like they're going as hard as they can. And to me, Madden doesn't portray that at this point. I would like to see the player run through the end zone. Again, it's a small little detail, but it's kind of immersion breaking. I would like to see him finish into the end zone and maybe trigger some sort of, you know, celebration or something like that. But one cool thing I've noticed too, when plays like this happen, you can hear the crowd change. And it's very cool that maybe they're going for a, I don't know, like a you're at the game level experience and not necessarily a broadcast experience. But we'll see more once more gameplay comes out. So here is Maximum Football 20. Now, I know this game gets pandered to a lot as being very bad. I actually went through a phase where I played it quite a bit. Now, with all of its flaws, I think it's fair to judge Maximum Football against this at times. And this is a cover, like a zone coverage. So I want to talk through the AI and how far it's come and the animation-based systems that they're using. So this corner at the top of the screen is going to have a flat. So you're going to have your, your cover two guys behind it. But as you can see here, how sloppy it looks. He does justify where he's at in his zone. But again, the footwork is very, very choppy. Um, it's ugly to look at. And I, I think just looking from where it's at now to this, the amount of strides that this game has taken, it's really incredible. Since we're talking about Madden on the PS2, we're going to talk about this clip here and the cover two zone that this game portrays. So you can see basically from both sides, let's look at this right corner first. And then I'm going to talk about the safety play, which again in this game is still absolutely incredible to watch. You can see he passes, he points, and his back pedal changes based off where the receivers are. And that's one thing I would like to see Maximum Football adapt is the better secondaries with the communication maybe point off where the zone, you know, the receivers trailing through these zones. Um, this is a user-controlled player kind of over here from he basically switches from Porter to this once the ball's in the air, but you can see he's maintaining his zone, and once the ball's in the air, if that moron didn't user control him, that's probably going the other way. And just because we're talking about Madden 06 and the QB vision, this was my favorite feature ever in Madden, and I know that sounds silly because it was basically hated by every human on the planet, but I want to tell you also, you can see these two safeties are playing almost two different techniques. This is the wide side of the field, as you can see the alignment from this hash. So this safety in a cover two can get more vertical as to where this safety is going to have to cover more field to get to the boundary. And why it's important for you to funnel these receivers in on a cover two and get physical and pass them to the secondary. Um, but one thing I want to basically say in this clip is how the QB vision manipulates the defense. So Hasselback's QB is locked onto, I'm assuming this is the square receiver out here, and you can see this safety here, because of that, goes more towards this um, middle of the field. So you could manipulate these safeties and switch back and then basically get them out of position like that. It wasn't 100% foolproof, but instead of it gave you another thing offensively. If you were a good player, you could look the safety off. And as you could see, if you were to switch back to this streak 
there's no way this this safety is going to be able to cover that and get up here to make a play on the ball. But again, this was the tech on the PS fucking two of all generations. And we're to the point now where the same weird glitchy things are happening. And it's been like 25, 20, 25 years where they've not made vast improvements. So here we're going to look at a cover two or as close as I could find. And this is some Madden 24 hype stream with two, I guess, pro Madden players, whatever that means. And I'm listening to what these guys do. So a lot of the Madden players will post like how they do their coverages and different things. Well, it's absolutely insane, the stupidity from some of those guys. They'll have this corner playing a deep half, this guy man on this player, this guy man here, this corner just playing a zone randomly, and then they'll use or cover something. But what you get here is at least I can talk intelligently about what Tredavious White's doing. Because the rest of this, I I think it's man stuff. I, I don't know. But Trey White is going to be the cover two here. And you can see it results in interception. But after the play, he does a nice 45 degree back pedal. He looks like an athlete. Um, he's reading the quarterback's eye. So in the cover two here, you're going to get an issue with what to do. So you're going to have this flat route come here. And then you're going to have a route develop behind him. So it's like a levels concept, which is a good zone beater. And what happens is Trey White sees this guy threatening right away, breaks on the receiver, and you could see developing behind him, the user stops covering. And Trey White flips his hips, and he actually does a pretty good job of animation, jumps the route, and then basically turns it upfield. Now, the reason why I'm showing that play out is because I want to talk more about this transition that happens when the interception plays out. So in Madden, you catch it, transition happens, okay? And look at the, the, the footwork is very strange to me. It's like the game's animation is trying to catch up with you holding up on the D-pad now. Like that stutter that happens there. So it's like it's not a smooth transition that happens. That costs you a second or two. And in maximum football, it looks like it just plays out and it continues. It gives you the user control right after. But look how much smoother that plays out than this, like, this hitch step that takes place here. And it's very baffling to me to see that after seeing the maximum football play out. So um, we're going to look at this third clip here from maximum football. Now, this is an example of a scoop tackle from a throw um we'll just kind of let it play out Catch me by number so we'll talk through some things here and uh look at the play a little bit more in depth but again um pocket looks pretty solid you get a really wide blitz here and instead of kick stepping these players aren't animated to do that but um they chase him down and make the play somehow and push, you know, it builds a pocket. And one animation I want to look at is this this left tackle. So he's taking on this smaller blitzing DB. And you can see as he animates, he stiffens up, um, extends his arms, uses his size to basically engage this smaller player, and then basically push him upfield out of the play. It's a very cool looking animation. And it kind of looks like they're respecting the weight, height, um, you know, size difference between these players. Now, I will talk about this animation here. Um, so you get the catch. It's a very cool turnaround and adjust for the ball catch. To me, this player should have died. His momentum should keep carrying him to the right for this hit to take place. But spur the moment, he's able to use or control the player back upfield. Again, I think it's another thing that they're going to toy with and fix, hopefully. And then you get this tackle. Now, here's Madden doing it in their hype trailer. But you can see that Maximum Football can do the same form tackles, um, you know, without this sapient technology that's, I guess, necessary for simulation football. Um... It's, it's very crazy that they're able to do that. It's such a small studio. But again, I, I it's Madden. I don't know what to tell you. Um, 
And I like how they land and there's like a jolt back up from this player and he rolls off and it's not just like he's on the ground. He's the roll off this player. The physics are respected and uh, I like this little animation. This guy, you know, he stops himself, his momentum, and he catches himself. Um, very cool little tackle there. But again, with Sapien technology, um, I guess maybe maybe Maximum Football is stealing that idea and they're using it as well for their game. That's the only explanation I can come up with. But you can see these hits. They look physical and, you know, it looks like football. It looks brutal. Physicality is a major component of football, and for some reason, we haven't really seen that since the OG hit stick days. Uh, I, I don't know. I don't work for EA. I'm not sponsored by anybody. Um, I just kind of wanted to talk through a few of these clips, compare them to old Maddens, new Maddens, um, you know, some clips of Maximum Football 20 to show you kind of where this game has come from. Um, to me, the delay is a little justified. They need to fix some of the blocking animations up front, add some double-team block animations, fix a little bit of stuff that makes this game feel a little bit more like football. And I think that um, this being free, regardless when it comes out, will have a user base of people that play it. And someone like me, I definitely want to be able to throw money into it to support the developers in some way, whether that's with some sort of, like, um, you know downloadable season content maybe i'm not sure but definitely excited for this game just want to get my thoughts on it real quick and maybe break it down from a football perspective